Hello, my name is Steve Royce with Crescent Design and I'm here to introduce our vacuum purge adapter, the VPA, and give you a short tour and a demonstration of how it works. With the VPA, used in conjunction with the HBLT and the Smart Manifold, it completely automates the process of preparing the catheter or product, whichever product what you may have to test, and testing them either in sequence or in parallel. So to start, we'll start on the left-hand side here. You'll see we have the vacuum reservoir, which is we use to store the vacuum and any water that may be extracted from the product. On the front of the unit, we have the vacuum pressure switch where you may select the level of vacuum that you choose to use when preparing your catheter. And two timer buttons here. Uh, we'll see the timers on the back and this allows you to select uh, one or the other uh, and they may be set for different amounts of time. On the front we have selector buttons for each port that allow you to choose one or more ports for the purposes of preparing the catheter and use it for testing. Now we've turned the unit around so you can see the rear. Here we have the power switch for turning the unit on and off we have a USB port that allows you to connect it to Lab Genie, which provides even additional functionality along with the HBLT and the Smart Manifold. The power connection, cooling fan, and here are the two timers uh, that are uh, started from the front of the unit. And they can be changed by simply hitting the, the uh, button here, and you see that the digits are changing and it cycles around from zero up to nine and then back to zero. And here, the, similarly, each digit allows you to go up and down to change the, the vacuum time to the time you wish. And you select that number empirically so that depending on the size and volume of your product, you either increase or decrease the, the timer. With two timers, it allows you to select a shorter time when you're initially evacuating the catheter, when there's only air, some customers want to evacuate it after the catheter is done being tested and they want to remove the, the water, which will take longer than the air, and the second timer allows you to set that to a longer period of time. Over here, you see the connector for the vacuum reservoir that is attached to the side of the VPA. Okay, here we are with a couple of catheters hooked up to the VPA. The purpose of this VPA is to eliminate the need for manually preparing the catheter, however you might do it now with uh, manual syringes. Uh, these are relatively large catheters, so I could demonstrate uh, how it works. We have it hooked up to the, these two ports, and with these buttons here, I can select which ports are connected or will be connected when we activate the VPA. And you may do up to 10 or any sequence that you wish. You see here the vacuum pressure switch, and right now it's displaying minus 12.47. I believe I have it set to minus 12, it will come on, and minus 12 and a half, it cycles off. So during this demo, we'll hear it cycle on and off automatically. <clears throat> we have the two timers, one and two. One is normally set to a low time so that it evacuates the, only the air in the unit, it, which evacuates much faster than water. If you choose to do that, the second timer is available to be set to a higher uh, duration. Timer one is currently set to 20 seconds. Timer two is set to 40. So I have everything set up with our smart manifold. I've selected ports one and two, ports one and two on the VPA, and I have a test set up here. So prior to the test, we need to prepare the catheters, which that is to say, remove all of the air. So I will hit timer one, and you can see that right away, the catheters, the balloons are evacuated, and uh, the pump is cycled on as it draws the air out into the vacuum container on the mounted on the side of the VPA. <clears throat> and we'll go ahead and let it um, let the vacuum pump cycle off 
so it's not quite as distracting. And it's done. So now I'm going to go up here and I'm going to hit this, this test. It's a simple ramp test, which uh, starts with a, uh, a fill, which you should be able to see. Anyone that uses a HBLT right now is familiar with this process of automatically filling the catheters. And so it's pumping fluid into the catheters uh, until it reaches 8 PSI. And uh, that will happen soon as it gets, as they fill up. And should be right about now. There. So now the HBLT is resetting itself prior to the test. And now it's ramping to pressure. That's a very short test, only goes to 15 PSI for a maximum of four seconds, and then it ramps back down to zero. It's down to zero, and the test is done. Of course, your test would be longer, and uh, when it's done, we simply hit the timer that we, we want. In this case, I'm going to choose timer two because it's 40 seconds instead of 20 and we're removing the water which will take longer. So let's go ahead and do that. And you can hear the vacuum pump came on and the catheters are being completely evacuated. And we'll wait until this ready light comes on which is just above the timer and, or the, the sensor, I should say, and that indicates that the timer in the back has cycled off and the unit is ready to continue testing if you wish. So the timer has cycled off, the unit is now ready for use, and as you can see, it actually took quite a bit less than 40 seconds and that can be established empirically depending on whichever product that you're choosing to do. But that completely automates the process of preparing the catheter for testing and then running the test and then evacuating the catheter afterwards if that's what you choose to do. Uh, there are other videos available on our website that discuss other aspects of using HBLT and its accessories. I invite you to check them out at your convenience. Thanks very much.